Hello, Schmoville. Well, welcome back to the Schmoes No podcast channel. Um, and if you're brand new to the channel, thank you for exploring it. If this is the first one you're exploring, it's going to be a fun one. But make sure you go back and check out the other ones on the channel thus far. So if you are familiar with the podcast, we've had a few different phases. This upcoming one that we're about to venture into will be phase five. Um, but now the ones that are being uploaded are phase one. This episode right here that you're about to watch is the last episode of the Phase One podcast. And what that means is our engineer, our buddy, comedian, John Scheiser, a.k.a. Cheese, was our engineer for about 11 episodes. And this was his last one because we, when we started, you know, Cheese was a guy who just had a couple of some equipment that he was just helping us get the... Um, get the episodes out there so people could hear them. But once the show started to gain some more listeners, Mark and I realized we had to kind of up the quality and get some um, audio, and that will be announced, and I'll tell you more about that in Phase 2 once that starts. But this is the end of Phase 1. We had our buddy on, DJ Goldberg, who, if you're listening to the show nowadays, you're familiar with DJ. He's been on a bunch of times in the recent episodes. And we talk TV. That's what DJ knows. DJ is a big uh, TV guy. He works in TV. Um, and then we got into some of our favorite movies as well, but it's, it's always a fun conversation when DJ's in there. Guy knows his stuff. He's one of the smartest guys I know. Um, I enjoy talking to DJ. He's a funny dude and you guys will enjoy it. So again, thank you for being part of the Schmoes No Podcast channel. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Subscribe if you haven't and leave some comments if you want to and we'll talk to you soon. All right, guys, welcome back to the Schmoes No Podcast. Uh, it's very nice to have everybody back. I am yes. Christian. Uh, my name is uh, Mark Ellis. I don't know if you know me. And, and my uh, name is... Oh, his name is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cheese. What's up, Cheese? How are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Good to be back. And if you heard that snorting in the background, that is <laughs> our guest for this week, um, a very good friend of ours. And you, if you guys are hardcore Schmoes fans and have been with us since the current TV days... You might know this certain fellow. Oh, right. This is DJ Goldberg. Hello. DJ Goldberg is a manager over at McGee's Television Company, or company in general, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderland Sound and Vision. Wonderland Sound and Vision. And DJ is lying very seductively on the couch <laughs> right now at the beginning of this center. I want to yeah. do the Costanza. Yeah, just, keep, just keep your pants on. <laughs> the, um, the podcast is just the first step, buddy, all right? There's a lot of hurdles you got to jump through before we get to that. Sorry, I'm, I'm obsessed. Look, guys, it's the one sound clip we have. We're gonna use it as much oh, as we possibly is can. Is Fred Norris here? Uh, I know. Um, so, okay, so we're actually this is gonna be really fun because DJ is like one of our really good friends, and we're just gonna shoot the shit and kind of just talk about how he got involved uh, in television and where he you know, kind of what what projects he's working on and. We normally talk about movies, so it's nice to have a change and talk about television today. Yeah, we're talking uh, TV. That's the uh, the little box that eventually movies come on to uh, after a while. So <laughs> it, it all comes true. full circle. It's a good transfer. It's true. We're going to be talking to DJ about some of the stuff that he's working on right now, some of the stuff that their company has on the air, and some of his favorite TV shows that maybe he's not involved in. DJ, how did you get involved in the tube industry, boy? <laughs> uh, I actually... Um took a liking to the to the boob tube if you will when i was when i was really young like five six years old i started trying to watch uh shows that i had no business watching and trying to talk to my parents about well, you like like giving your parents like like well, you know, lighting well yeah 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 like i'd watch company? i'd watch cheers and i you know and i'd and i'd watch stuff like that and new heart and and i'd try and you know like have uh uh, an adult conversation with them about what was going on, and they would just look at me like I was a fucking freak, you know. And I want to uh, be normal when I grow up. No, you really don't want to be normal when you grow up. <laughs> DJ in a diaper trying to break down like why Chrissy should never been replaced. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used DJ to you know figure out who shot Jr. before anybody. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly. That was the summer that I was born. Was uh, was the Jr. Uh, the Jr. Fiasco, but um, who I shot uh, Jr. Who spawned a new icon <laughs> exactly it's uh it was great and i used to like um i'd try and barter my way to stay up and and be like if i can stay up and watch cheers kind of i'll like i'll take the trash out and i'll i'll do all this and they're like no did you do that anyway like what the fuck you know like, <laughs> he's negotiating absolutely not yeah 
So uh, yeah, set the stage for a future of brokerage <laughs> TV. Dealers. Yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, so I just stuck with it, and I and I was always uh, you know shooting little things when I was a kid on you know home video cameras and um, lots of commercials. I would do like parody commercials when I was a kid and stuff, and uh, and I went to school for it, and and um, then I moved to Los Angeles, and like. As everybody knows, when you're out here, it's it's whatever job you can get, you get. And I just sort of fell into the film world for like, you know, four or five years. And um, it was awesome. But by the same token, I was uh, I was frustrated with the cycle of it. You know, it was hurry up and wait and, you know, trying to sometimes get people uh, excited about 20 year old pieces of material that have gone through like 47 iterations of writer, director, attachment, you know, and. I, that cycle wasn't for me, and so after a while, actually, our pal here, Christian, uh, found out that uh, the comedy department at Warner Brothers Television was looking for somebody, and um, I went and met with them, and the next thing you know, I was over there, and so that's how it sort of there you go. started. The making making jobs exactly, happen. exactly, We're yeah. The scenes everywhere, kids. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and you're asking what I'm doing. I'm sitting next to a little chimp by a rocky post. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that being said, uh, so DJ, you went from um, working at Warner Brothers to because McGee had a deal. Still does, still does. Still does. We have a television he's a director, by the way, not a sandwich at McDonald's. Just right. so, <laughs> so everybody knows. That was a Compton BLT. <laughs> right. McGee, exactly. of course, is the accomplished director slash producer, and he uh, has a deal over at Warner Brothers. And so, what shows do you guys have on the air right now? Right now, we have uh, three shows on the air: uh, Nikita, Supernatural. And um, Chuck okay. on NBC. All the successful shows that I've heard of. And Chuck is uh, w- when the Schmoes started. Our first, uh, our, our first like kind of pilot for the Schmoes was uh, we reviewed uh, TV shows. Yeah. And uh, the first one we did was Chuck. That's right. And we both gave it a we, we gave it a pretty favorable review. We did. We didn't like the best friend, but we liked everything about Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we. Uh, but I've heard he's evolved since. We, we, we actually have a buddy in it. In it. So. Scott Krinsky's in it. Oh yeah, t- totally. Krinsky's yeah. one of the uh, one of the. The nerd herd guys, and yeah. he's, he's great, yeah. and uh, he's actually, uh, you know, a regular in hours. He started as, you know, just sort of a featured guest star and stuff. So he's made an appearance in Transformers three, also. He did. By the way. He did. Yeah. Oh, good for him. Scott. Yeah, yeah. that's oh, great. And um, yeah, uh, the show is in its final year. NBC picked it up for its its uh, its fifth season. So. Um, you know, it's sort of bittersweet, but... Uh, right. Well, so what happened, real quick, what happened with <laughs> Human Target? Human Target was um, was a DC property that we developed and had on the air for two years at Fox. And this, uh, this past season, they sort of decimated their schedule. And uh, along with, like, six other shows in, in two days, canceled it. So, and um, Human Target looked like it was going to be... Because, you know, you, I watch a lot of football on Fox, and so sure. you see all the promos for that, and it looked like it was going to kind of try to carry the torch... Uh, of 24's baton. So yeah, it, it was sort of a, a bad show. I saw a couple. Of yeah, episodes. it was sort of like an old man's A team. You know, it was uh, it, it was great and had a great cast. But um, this year, it sort of got it, it got decimated by um, scheduling on Fox with football with with the World Series and um, I think it's the World Series that's still on Fox. Whatever. Yeah. But yeah, and then Obama. Uh, there were Obama. T- yeah, there were two or three Obama. <laughs> there were two or three uh, Obama speeches that preempted it, and it, it literally aired on all five weekdays this year. So, I mean, it's tough to, to get yeah, an audience tough. coming back. Um, all right, do so. all TV networks do with that as much as Fox does? Because more than anybody else, it seems that Fox likes to juggle their lineup. I mean, that's what they, happened to Family Guy, they do. They do because they're in a, a unique position that they don't have any 10 p.m. programming. You know, at, at, when... when uh, when everything goes to you know, when everything goes to either local news or uh, or you know, serialized dramas, they don't they don't have that slot. You know? Yeah. So, do you think? Here's a question now that I I wanted to ask you as far as being in television. So what? So you're a manager at McCheese Company. True. What? Well, first of all, what does that entail? Uh, basically, we. Um, we service our on-air shows, you know, our current schedule uh, as far as, uh, you know, dealing with the writers and, and, and directors and stuff like that, uh, and the networks, obviously. But um, we're constantly looking for new material to, you know, to turn into to both cable and, and broadcast. Uh, so your job is to essentially yeah, find sh- yeah, shows. exactly. People, places, things, articles, you know, books, whatever. Great. 
Um, so you're like, a, you're like the, at the NFL combine with the stopwatch. Exactly. Like, okay. Looking okay. for everybody. Right. So I have right. an idea for a show about a talking dog that solves mysteries. Is there any room over there for it? It's a... <laughs> we'll talk later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We got this um, mystery van, right? <laughs> well, do you think the landscape as far as television is changing now? Because like... I'm watching Game of Thrones. I mean, Game of Thrones is all wrapped up now. And I know everyone's talking about it. And it's like, it's the show. Now, what I think was so great about Game of Thrones was the fact that you, they did a couple, a couple things really great, but I think they took everything from the novels. They didn't lose too much because they, they don't suffer from what film suffers is where you have to cut stuff. When you're spanning a show over 10 plus episodes or whatever it is, you can put all the stuff in great detail. Do you think more shows are going to start doing books for seasons? Um, I, I, look, I mean, I think that if if the the, the narrative uh, lends itself to that type of situation, then sure. But um, the thing about television versus film with with you know subject matter like Game of Thrones is it's total world creation. So when you, when you're doing that on the film side. Um, you know, you're, you're spending, you know, $150 million to make it as decadent and as amazing and shiny as possible. Whereas when you know you're going to be shooting 13 episodes of something, you build something out, but it's more about the, you know, it's more about the, the performances and the characters and how they, they exist in that world that's been created. Right. Like, what about like, like both True Blood and Dexter are both based off books as well, but, they, but they do a lot of changing that's where Game of Thrones didn't change much. Well, I mean, it, it. you know, it, it, it's all about, um, you know, creative integrity and, and you know, what, what the people who are, are adapting the, the source material choose to keep intact. I mean, obviously there's been, you know, film and television that the creators of the source material aren't happy with what, what comes out. And there are people who are very happy, you know. It's all about... Uh, you know, servicing what, you know, whoever's paying for it wants and, you know. And those are all premium cable shows. Completely. It, can a network ever pull off something like a, like, like an epic <laughs> Game of Thrones kind of thing? I mean, there, Game of Thrones had, you know, little dudes railing like hot chicks. Yeah, no. Naked the whole time. Well, it's, so, it's Sunset Boulevard. It's, Dink yeah, yeah, it's Dinklage. Do I mean, it doesn't it. matter. It's Dinklage. He can do whatever he wants. That's right. Well, um, you know, is that also because, well, you know, it's funny that you said that too because uh, the network's trying to do something risque where they're doing Playboy where they're trying to you know pull a page off of Mad Men's book you know who the times but th how do you do Playboy sh without showing it's it's really from my boobs. experience a lot of what Playboy has to offer is naked women yeah and maybe how that's you, just me being how do you do that the 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 you know the way that that's supposed to play out is basically it 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 chronicles the women who who you know go to this club and. Um, don't we want to, as men, see them naked? Of course we do. In, in the original, You're asking another man, hey, I want to see her naked. But the, but the, the original, the original yes. Playboy Club wasn't wasn't uh, you know it, it was it was a cocktail lounge where women. Yeah, they did stand up. That's where like right. Jim Hart and, uh, and a lot of the guys that started. started out. Right, exactly. And so, um, and it, you know, the original members were given keys, and that's how you how you got in. You showed this key that had the the iconic. So cool. Right, fucking so dope. cool. Really dope. So I'll never get one of those keys. No, no, no. <laughs> they're, 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 no, 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 never. No. Um, they're in the safe deposit boxes no. strewn across the country. You're gonna get the keys uh, to my apartment. But basically, uh, so basically, what it's about is uh, what, what it's supposed to be about. I don't, you know, I don't know what happened. What's gonna happen with it? But um, it's supposed to be about a, a woman who who realizes that the end of her run at the Playboy Club is is coming up. She's over the hill. There's a lot of young hot chicks nipping on her She's heels. She's becoming more Mrs. Garrett, less Blair. Exactly. So what it does is become <laughs> gross. So what is it? She's becoming more 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 Mindy Cohn uh, than yeah. she is. Uh, That's the one thing I Blair. never understood about Facts of Life, real quick. Is Natalie was the one that she, every episode she was off for five minutes and, and she like just came back from the gym. And she never <laughs> lost a pound in over three years. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Joe, yeah. you know, yeah. she had biceps now. Um, it's. Uh, hey, Mrs. It, Garrett, uh, I just finished working on your car. <laughs> yeah. Joe, Joe had a penis by the end of the series <laughs> yeah, finale. Exactly. No, but I it think was. Joe uh, was played by Andrew Dice Clay last season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it's fucking great. Mrs. Garrett, why don't you make me a pot steak? Hey, <laughs> uh, hey Tootie, what are you doing? <laughs> Get out the bedroom. I'll show you, Tootie. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so anyway, Playboy. Play, exactly. Yeah. So basically it's about that, that sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, her being upset with the fact that she's over the hill and then, you know, trying to poison the well. But uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a soap is what it is essentially. I'm just curious about it. I mean, it's just like, I, I'm for me, if HBO announces they're doing Playboy, 
I'm DVRing it the second I hear. Well, this the isn't the, this isn't yeah. the first time that uh, people have taken a run at um, at at turning this into a show. I mean, it, there have been several scripts written about the Playboy Club that have that have gotten you know bought initially and then not programmed. But um, the, you know, ABC is doing something very similar called Pan Am, where it's basically about the right. the culture right. of the uh, the flight attendants and um, flight attendants in the '60s, right? Right. Back when you could smoke on a plane. And, yeah, you know, bang and drink and, and yeah, out of the bathroom. exactly. Yeah, the good old days. So and and it's the same thing. It's it's a soap set against you know this this industry, which is awesome because it's period, which means it costs cash, and then you know um, it, it's a, it's a real it's a real departure from what we what we see normally on network television, which is nice. I'd be much more interested in Pan Am in the '60s or whenever that takes place than it know, is. It is Hel- Heather Lockley are working at LAX. Right, totally. I think day. it's just that network television scares me and. I guess I understand why they have to do what they do because, you know, advertisers and everything that they, they right. have to do. I get it. But it's just cable and especially, you know, since The Sopranos and everything, too, it's just, you know, it just dramatically changed the game. Yeah, and, yeah it's exciting. And, uh, it, you know, as somebody who, who tries to make good television and entertaining television, it's um, the cable game is great because it's cycleless. It, there's no seasons for it. I mean, some people open and close. They buy twice a year, you know, that sort of a thing. But you can constantly develop for that because there's no real, you know, HBO. If they want to play it when they want to play it, they play it. You know, yeah, Larry David the, wakes yeah. up two and a half years later. He's like, yeah, I think I'll do another season. Of so, exactly. Right. Exactly. I mean, I mean, look at AMC. I mean, that's not a premium cable channel. That's still a pay cable channel. But they're calling it the new HBO. Look at it. I mean, look, I mean, you'll see the killing just ended, which, you know, a lot of people were upset with but uh the killing just ended you'll see another episode of the killing which started after the last season of mad men ended before the next season of mad men you know yeah it's just they, they took their time with their negotiations and they they don't have anybody to answer to you know right. so um, is there a car that networks can play that that can make them you know the these are the shows to watch over premium cables or something that they can do well i mean a, a lot a lot of uh a lot of you know, very well respected um, filmmakers are are foraying into television, and and certainly um, a lot of them are directing, you know, high end network television pilots, and then getting executive producer credit on on the series. And so, yeah, I mean, that's that's something they can they can hype, they can say from the writer, or, you know, from the director of whatever, or the producer of whatever. Can you and, give me an example of that? I, like, I know Darabont did, you know, AMC. Did, uh, oh, uh, yeah. you want a network yeah, example? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Jama Colette Sarah, um right. just directed a, a pilot called The River. Which, and Jama, of course, directed Unknown and directed, um, uh, what's the other one? Orphan. Excuse me, Orphan, yeah, which we both... Love the orphan. Love the orphan. Yeah. <laughs> and he also just got like, you know, two or three really, he got a, 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 a big, you know, a, a three part series at Warner Brothers films. And, you know, and, you know, so, you know, he's uh, he's doing that. I mean, there's, um, uh, God, uh, Sean Levy directed a a, a a comedy pilot this year. I mean, you know, these guys make six, seven, eight million dollars every time they direct a film, but they're, you know, they're they're coming to doing this because the talent's there and it's a lot quicker and the the chances of them getting it on the air with their involvement are, you know, through the roof. Right. Uh, well, that's it's great. You know, we do learn again. We do we go and we see a lot of films and we we kind of catch up on our film. You know, we're, we're starting to get more and more in depth with film, our film knowledge. But as far as TV, I'm literally watching as a casual fan all the time. And it's tough to get me to watch that's... anything. I mean, I haven't even seen Game of Thrones. Like, there's like three or four shows a year that Harloff is like, "Dude, you got to watch this so we can talk about it." And I'm like, I don't have. Dude, there's you know. there's some really good in the last twenty years. There's been some really really amazing television. What made. should we be watching this season that's coming out? I'm sure you've seen all the pilots and everything. I'm yeah, wearing yeah, yeah. a Central Perk sweatshirt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the season of Friends comes Big, out this year. Um, there's, uh, uh, you know, I the, uh, being bitter and not having a, a pilot picked up the series Please, this year. Please, this is where yeah. comes to um, there, there are some good pilots that are coming out. I, I'm excited for Pan Am. Um, you watched it already. You like yeah, it. yeah. Okay. It, it's well done. Um there's there's some comedy pilots that are that are floating around that are that are good. Dare I say, Whitney? Um, is it good? It, it's not great, but it, it has the makings of of being something. How's Crystal Lee in it? He's honest. great. Is he good? Yeah, he's so deadpan and hilarious. I okay, love good. him. Oh, I might just be partial to him from you know from schmoes and whatnot, but um, he's uh, he's really good in it. And uh, she actually had two pilots this year, one in second position that got picked up as well, called Two Broke Girls, that she co-wrote with uh, 
Michael Patrick King, the guy who right. created uh, Sex in the City, and that stars Cat Dennings, and that, that's on CBS. And oh, that was the Whitney show also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. that's okay. Uh, she's she's making I bank this year, Whitney. Yeah, yeah. So th that's cute. I mean, there's a couple of. But what shows? I mean, like you saw, because you, I, I share your taste in television shows. Like if you were like to call me up, and like, there's you gotta watch. This there's show. nothing huge nothing. that that. I mean, Terra Nova, like, anything? I mean, I it it could potentially be cool, but it's just been such a nightmare. As far as getting it, I mean, they fired everybody twice. They've shot the pilot twice. I mean, it's it, it's it's a pain in the ass. Really? Have you seen it yet? I've seen some of it. Yeah. And, and you don't think it looks it's that great? It's pretty fucking cool. It looks cool, but yeah. You saw how the yeah, I just I, I I don't know what their idea is for series, so I can't really speak to it. You there. know what I kind of got into, and I saw uh, I watched Torchwood. I watched the pilot of Torchwood, and I kind of got into that. That was kind of a cool. It's interesting, rest. right? And Torchwood is on stars. It is. Yeah, just going back into the premium cable, and, and it, uh, you know, it's a story of this, this guy who can't be killed, and all of a sudden everybody else on Earth can't die of anything. Oh, Nobody's about this, dying. Right. right. And then you realize, oh, that's kind of cool, and then after a day, you're like, oh, shit, we, people need to die, or else. Uh, you we're going to get too populated. And, yeah, yeah. we're going to be like cockroaches. So, exactly. Uh, that was cool, and then also watch Falling Skies is my other thing. And, yeah. And I, I, I dug Falling Skies, but from what I've seen of it, I think it's a, it, it's a pretty cool concept. Yeah, the sci fi people seem to dig it. I have four episodes on my. DVR. I watched the first one. I watched the first half an hour, and I like it so far. I just it's not. It's, it's but again, it's like the only thing to really kind of catch my attention. Where like I cannot miss a single episode is Game of Thrones. It's the only thing that I've been. And pardon the interruption. <laughs> Which, yeah. by the way, DJ's dad looks like Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? But oh, just don't tell my dad that he looks like Tony Kornheiser because yeah, he, he fucking hates, hates Tony Kornheiser. <laughs> and he looks just like him. It's he great. looks just like him. I send great. DJ pictures of him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. Um, well, then your dad show is indispensable. In my <laughs> exactly. Um, it's funny. Uh, there, there are. I mean, the days of you know being able to turn on HBO and and DVR. Uh, you know, an episode of Six Feet Under the same week as an episode of The Sopranos is 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 far you know far gone. Doesn't it seem like that that, that could come back at any time though? With something like that, as as creative an outlet as HBO has become, and sh and Showtime and you know it certainly can. Sh Showtime's doing that. Yeah, Dexter I mean, does big numbers. Yeah, Californication, I mean, all the yeah. best shows. Nurse on. Jackie. Yeah, I mean, they do well. Yeah. Um, and and uh, again, no no rhyme or reason. They'll buy something that they think they can. Yeah, they're buy, they can buy something that they think that they can program at certain parts of the year, and they do it. And and they pay they, they pay for it. It's nice. Yeah. Now, as as somebody who works in in, in mostly in scripted television, right? Correct. Do you do you despise reality shows when you see a promo for for Wipeout or for uh, you know for America's Got Talent? Hell no. Do you, do you, you don't throw a brick at the TV? I would love to have a wipeout under my belt. I mean, those things are, I mean, look, they, they are cheap. what they are. They're cheap. They make a lot of money. They're, I mean, uh, my company has produced uh, um, reality shows in the past. The the famed Pussycat Dolls uh, reality show is a Wonderland. I have that on my ceiling in my bedroom. Exactly. Um, that, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking to... Um, you know, to some some people right now, actually, about another really fun potential wipeout esque type. Can can I please be on it? I've never begged you for anything in I, my life. I would love to do something like wipeout. Because when I was a kid, I always wanted to be on Double Dare. Oh, tell me about it. That, that's right? seven physical challenges max, <laughs> and most of them are just like you just like walk through a little. You you, you, you you play in some slime and you find a red flag. Wipeout is like serious athletic totally. competition. Yeah. The best part about about Double Dare is finding out that Mark Summers was uh, a, yeah. a, a neat freak. Yeah, uh, <laughs> what? No, I, I need more, oh, more of this dirt. Yeah. Shut up. He was a, no, not a hypochondriac. He was a uh, obsessive compulsive oh, right, neat right, freak. Right, 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 right. And they, really? And he worked on Double Dare where there was just shit strewn just everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, and that was even better when Burt Reynolds dumped the coffee on him on right. uh, <laughs> Yeah, what the hell was that? I don't That's know. right. They were dumping coffee on each other back and forth. <laughs> oh, the days. Um, all right, so we talked. So, what are your favorite shows on TV right now? Like, if you were to say your like your favorite shows, and you can't mention any of the ones you have on the air. Oh, you um, can mention the ones he has on the air. Yeah, no, I but mean nepotism. Yeah, uh, I won't. I won't nepotize. Um, you know, I think that uh, what's I'll, on your DVR, what you, what you have to watch. You know, you what, have to. What work did I go it. home and turn on yeah. last night? Yeah, Swamp People. The hell is that? <laughs> yeah, right. 
Reality TV? <laughs> yeah, Jeez. reality Jeez. TV. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's you bag a gator and you shoot it with the 20. Boom! <laughs> She's like, that's my last Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last week. That, that, yeah, that's fun. I mean, look, it's the summertime, so there's nothing, you know, there, there's there's Game of Thrones. True Blood. There's, you know. Yeah, I never really got into True Blood. I just think it's too campy. It's gotten extremely more. Uh, it's very campy this season. It's cheesy, I've heard. It's and I've watched a couple. So of, yeah, I've watched a couple episodes, and I, so I really can't believe they put yeah. that on television. I had to watch a couple episodes a few weeks ago or something, and it, it what really got me. It took me like twenty minutes to get adjusted to the stupid accents everybody. Right, has. I like the show. Those Southern accents are atrocious. I dig the Terrible. show, but it, you have to embrace the camp of it for the first two seasons because it gets good. But this, like anybody tuning in for this season and for the first time, going that show sucks. I, it's very hard to put up an argument against it. It's just so tough to get. That's my one problem with with, with shows like that. Is like Game of Thrones or. True Blood is it? If you don't watch it from from second one, you can't just you know like like say what you want about like Whitney this fall. If I saw an episode of Whitney mid season, I could still probably most definitely. Get it, but look, but that's Game the Thrones, difference between. Be so well, I mean, stuff. look, that's the difference between between pay pay television and and you know, cable a half hour multi camera you know regular broadcast network show is that you know they they they're built and they're they're engineered to be. To, to be closed ended, you know, they're they're not these open ended, serialized, you know, situations where you know, like if you didn't watch The Sopranos, you know, before the one somebody got popped, you had no idea what he did to put him over the edge, you know. Yeah, that's why. And The Sopranos was tough to get into. Also, I mean, at least when Lost was airing, they would do, you know, they had episodes that, every so often. They would do, do, do like recap that episodes. But yeah, that's why. That's why. Like over the last five six years, the DVDs have also changed the face. Sure, of but also television. think about. The the shows think about the, the the body of work of these shows i mean the, the the mythology that these people are creating now the the bibles that they create for these these series are hundreds of pages you know and i mean look at lost alone i mean that's a great a great example i mean look at all th the history that happened on that island starting in the 70s you know up until real time. I mean, that's, you know, that's 40 years of, of shit that they had to document. Whereas I think that, you know, in the sixties and seventies in television, they, they didn't, it, it was, it was instant, right. you know, instant gratification and instant storytelling. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's a conundrum for most people is, is that you go to a movie to really get wrapped up in a story for two hours. And when, yeah. when you turn on TV, you just want something right. Or the, the perception is you want something like but that's, I, I think game of Thrones and stuff like that is, is cool. But it just it, it does take a lot of it's, work. Well, yeah, and, and it's also it's it's generational. It it really is. I mean, I mean, I I, I can't get Kornheiser to sit down and and watch. <laughs> you know, I can't get that guy to sit down and watch anything. You know, that's you know serialized as right. such, where he knows he needs to put in the work like to my, do my it. My dad watches Entourage religiously. Does he? That's great. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, but my parents watch NCIS religiously, but you know what? It's it's a case of the week, you know? It's like Mark Harmon's going to come in and save yeah, the day, it out, and right. it's done, right? Yeah, you certain, know? yeah my, my, my grandma, she I don't know if she remembers, you know, my name, but she she watches CSI, and she knows all the characters. Certainly. No, I mean, look, that's, that's she you know, because that's what they, <laughs> who, who, so do, who doesn't? I mean, but that's, that's, that's the the trend in television watching that they in their adult lives have have become accustomed to we i mean i mean we're we're a generation below them and there's a generation below us that's you know in the in the you know in the private sector working now that do everything on their fucking cell phones you know and that's gonna you know and they've been doing that in in asia and in europe for the last you know 20 years too so like it, it's just it, it's weird it's it you know if you can watch something close-ended on your handheld device then how much thought do you really need to put into it you know what i mean that's why it's hard for me it's like it's such a such a short attention span culture now totally but now i have to sit down and pay an hour to you know well, that's, and really that's, but dude, that's why it's on showtime and that's why it's on hbo that's why it's not on cbs right you know what i mean right right because i guess that's the thing that's a good point because as far as i think game of thrones does show that people do want to invest that type of thought sure. but of course well, you can't take that kind of risk on tv although lost did it and work great, but everyone's trying to make the new loss. Yeah, but lost it didn't work great, but by the same token, it also went off the rails, you know, t to some extent. And and the writer's strike fucked fucked the the 
the progression of that show, nat- the natural progression of that show. So, I mean, it, it did have something to contend with, you know? Right. I think the writer's strike was created by the Dharma Initiative. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, 1972. You know, one of the good things about television that, you know, we've seen in the past is that television has produced some, you know, big film actors from Will Smith to, mm-hmm. you know, wh- whoever. But like the, to Carlton, Alfonso Riviera. That's right. Uh, Jimmy, that's... Jim Carrey, Jamie Foxx. Right. I mean, so who... Do you think, is there anybody out there right now, a younger actor that's doing okay in TV or hasn't really made their strides in TV that you could see becoming a good film star? Oh, Do not totally. say Nick Cannon. Please don't say Nick he's Cannon. A host. Yeah, he's a host. Yeah, and he's maybe the, the most useless host I've ever seen. I was watching <laughs> America's Got Talent for 10. The guy is useless he's, on that show. He's useless in general. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen somebody that's worth less than that guy on that show. He's, <laughs> there's, he does nothing. No, he just hugs the contestants. <laughs> <laughs> and they have Carson Daly there. Carson Daly like, introduces the show. Oh, that's right. Oh, no, 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 no. Carson Daly is uh, the voice. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. But he's not doing anything. It's, it, like, yeah, he's just know. getting an extra paycheck. Yeah. Just have Piers Morgan do it. Just have Piers Morgan do it. Yeah. Piers Morgan. Anyway. Well, uh, so is there anybody in particular that you, you know, that's out there younger? I mean, I, I, hap- I mean, not even younger. I mean, I happen to think that... Um, the guy who stars in Chuck, Zachary Levi, you know, he did he did uh, that animated film this year, Tangled, where he sang in it and, and right. did the voice, I, which I, is great. I love. Tangled. I, <laughs> I happen it. to think that he's uh, he's likable enough to 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 yeah, be is he super religious. No, he's oh. a Jew. Is he really? Yeah. Well, he can still be religious. Yeah. No, I mean, but he's not like. Uh, <laughs> not down, up the street yeah, he's now. yeah he's not wearing payas and uh, and right. a black hat. I mean, yeah. I mean. Okay. As yeah, DJ is Jewish too. As I am too. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> just give some cred. I, yeah, um, if you didn't know that DJ Goldberg was Jewish, <laughs> yeah. he is. No, I, I do happen to think that there. Uh, I mean, look, it, it, look. I think that there are people who started in film that went to television that can go back in a film and do both. I mean, look at Rob Lowe. I mean, he's on Parks and Recreation. The guy is a staple star, no matter what he's in. You know, Alec Baldwin. He could. You know, I mean, he stole The Departed, and still he goes back and works for Tina Fey. You know, right. Um, <laughs> It's it, you know there the it it doesn't matter your age or or you know your looks or anything it's just it's about connecting with with the audience and, and I mean, your looks might have something to do <laughs> well yeah you know I mean but 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 more and more people the 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 the, the share the you know the share yeah, <laughs> the the major share of people who watch television don't live on the coasts you know where where I think more people are. Um, uh, exposed to, to to show business and and to to prettier people, you know, and I think and, and I don't even mean prettier people. I you mean put ugly people on TV because nobody in the Midwest is going to care. Is that what you mean? Small people is the top twenty show. Exactly. You know, and that's people farming out. from Louisiana, right? Um, but I, I just think that the, there there are reasons why advertisers buy certain shows, and it's because they they need to service the the hardworking, you know. Uh, uh, less cynical people who li- who happen to live in the middle of blue our country. Collar. Yeah, not even blue collar. No. no. Do you, have you guys seen Raising Hope? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I think it's a I, modern day Roseanne. It's that phenomenal. A pretty fun show. Uh, yeah. Martha Plimpton got uh, nominated for an Emmy. Yeah, for, that show's actually. Really and Cloris Leachman, by the way, too. And I think that's one of those shows too. Like uh, I still I swear by the fact I think multi camera shows comedies are. I know that the, some of them do well. I hate them. I like single camera shows. Um, I, think I mean, but listen, that's also a generational thing. I it mean, is, but it's but they're still making them. It's just like I mean, look, there there are uh, Warner Brothers is a studio whose mandate is to go out and make make multi camera shows, and it's, it's because the golden age of television was was built by a multi was built by the multi camera. Right, but it's so different now. But I mean, it's different now, and and but you're you're also forgetting that you grew up watching shows. That were no, exclusively multi. Absolutely, the things I just think that there's certain ones you watch. Like I just don't like being told when I'm supposed to. Laugh. It's the laugh track that yeah. pisses people it is. off. It is, it like, is, yeah. But yeah. you know what? You watch a show like How I Met Your Mother, right? And that looks like it's a single camera comedy, but it's a multi camera comedy that's shot without a studio audience. Yeah, I think that you know, I think a lot of people just like to sit at home and like to not. It's not they're being told when to laugh. It's that I think the laughter subconsciously tells them that they're enjoying the show. Yeah. Maybe it's the studio audience. I think that I hate. I hate them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People in general. Yes, um, Me too. that's not true. But I don't like the studio. It audience. is true. I don't think Alf would have worked as well without the canned laughter. I got to be honest. Well, with I'm you. just what I'm saying it's a generational thing. Just like someone, someone was saying the other day, make a re- to try to remake uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Okay, 
I don't think that movie should be remade because it was a je- it was the a- it worked for the eighties. That type of tone that was working for the eighties back then, it made Big Trouble in Little China work. Just like I think multi camera shows make were like TJ said, they were generational. We don't need them now. Push them out. No more. Yeah, but they were good as recent as you know the you know what? Seinfeld Friends. and that was, Friends. That was that was ten ten years ago. I I, I think it could well the twenty when it oh, premiered started. right. Yeah, but I I I think you can still. I think they can still work. I think I think you can have a world where both what exist. What multi camera show do we you watch? We live in a world where they both exist. I don't. Oh, I don't what? watch any television at night. I really don't. What multi camera show do you besides Two and a Half Men because of the publicity it has? I don't watch Two and a Half Men. How, how dare that. you accuse me? I'm not of saying Big you do, Bang but you, Theory. Aware of it. Big Bang Theory is pretty good, actually. Great show. Big Bang Theory is, is very it, good. You hated it. The, yeah, the pilot wasn't that funny, but it's gotten really good. Another uh, pilot they shot twice. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It actually, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty solid show. It's a great show. Why, like with Whitney's show, they chose to shoot it with the with the multi camera just to kind of you you, you throw can't it back in there. No, nah, you can't shoot her show single cam. It's just it, it doesn't cut, the, the humor and the way it's written. It doesn't cut together. Yeah, but but there there is a very there is a, a dearth of good shows that are you know that do have laugh tracks and that kind of stuff. Totally. But I'm holding out hope. Raising hope. Yeah. Single cam. What's um? <laughs> what are your fa- what's your favorite? What's your favorite show of the last like ten years? It could be anything. Um, and why? I'd say it's probably a a triumvirate of uh, The Sopranos, Six Feet Under, and The Wire. All HBO. Yeah. All all HBO and all uh, all shows that obviously pushed the envelope and had never done anything uh, had had never been seen on television before. No Family Guy creeping in there for you. I love Family Guy. <laughs> I do love Family Guy. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, that those shows and and if and and I'll throw in a network show uh, to um, because it's it's really one of the best shows that's been on television in the last ten years. And Dinotopia. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no dinosaurs. Um, no, the Siegfried and Roy uh, short-lived NBC Father of the Pride. No, <laughs> <laughs> is that a real show? Oh, yeah, yeah, Good sure. Lord. Uh, animated. Is that the um, one he got his head bitten off. <laughs> <laughs> you drag him off. No, yeah. it's uh, Friday Night Lights. Oh, it's a phenom- that show. You, you talk about there, there's so much drama on that show. The show. But it's, there's even more drama surrounding what's happening with that show. It started out on NBC, right, and then it went to the 101 Directv. Yeah, yeah, and then it now it's slowly making its way back. Well, right? no, they they basically uh, they basically um, in order to in order to uh, get it aired in in time for Emmy nominations and stuff because of the way that NBC was gonna bury it in their summer schedule. Um, DirecTV made a play to to distribute it, and, mm, and they okay. got and they got that information, and they got that deal, and then after the fact, NBC puts it back on, they replay it. But um, it it was uh, it was a really 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 great show, and it was a soap also, but just set against community. You know, the perfect. Last, sorry, last season was last season. Was that it, was Actually, the the uh, the the broadcast airing of the series finale was last night. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Now they're stuck in. Pennsylvania. Exactly, they're in Philly. All right, um, um, but yeah, it was. Uh, it's a great show, and and why also just because like you know uh, also with with uh, with the other three shows as well, um, they uh, they just have the th- this balance of of community and um, and but but also singular stories that you can you know relate to. Well, speaking of like, so football, you know, we had um, your your boss McGee did mm-hmm. a football film. He did, and um, so that a friend of ours wrote. That's right. What was a football film? Don't keep me in the dark. You know, you know what it was. It was uh, We Are Marshall. It was. The, all right, all right. I thought I, you knew what it was. No, all right. Sorry, we are I Marshall. was going to guess We Are Marshall, but I, I apologize. Sure. Sorry, it was We Are Marshall, guys. And, he goes uh, Wildcats. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, what uh? What is the next um film? In McGee's, um Oh, post. he's he's in post production on a film called This Means War right now. Um, it's for Fox. With uh, Will Smith, James Lasseter producing. Oh, nice. um, Is Will Smith in it? No, okay. it's uh, Reese Witherspoon, uh, Chris Pine, and Tom Hardy. Oh, cool. wow! Good yeah. cast. Great cast. Yeah. Great cast. What's and it about? It's basically um, Chris and Tom are uh, spies, and uh, they fall in love with the same woman, so they use their spy toys to fuck with each other. So it's like a better version of Pearl Harbor. Exactly. It's like a better version <laughs> of Schindler's that's, List too. That's a really loose. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a, a triangle, the crappy triangle. Yeah, just because there's a love triangle, I mean, it's like Pearl Harbor. It could be like Twilight too. It's like the Spy Harbor... versus Spy. Well, they didn't have war in Twilight. 
If you don't think that's a war of love, I emotions. love Twilight. Have to mention it. <laughs> it's sort you of like talking about True Blood. For it's sort minutes. of like Roots meets Ernest Goes to Camp. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I wanted to hear. Beautiful. Um, How are we doing? We are good. We're at right about forty. Oh, great. Okay, good. Um, all right. Well, let's talk some. One of the things that we're going to switch from TV now into film. Because um, one of the things DJ is uh, pretty well versed in is comedies, and we are going to give a breakdown of some of our favorite comedies in in film history. In film history. Oh, this is exciting! So we can all. What I think we'll all do to close out the show mm-hmm. is that we'll we, we can all pick one of our favorite comedies of all time, and yeah. then we will discuss it, and then we'll move on. Um, let's start with our guest because our guest. Uh, our guest is has to put you on the spot here, DJ. What's uh, one of your favorite comedies the, of all time? You're the comedy guy. Don't let film? us down. Yeah, yeah. Film. Don't uh, say you know Meteor Man. It's gonna disappoint. Don't us. say Yentl. Yeah. <laughs> and then we will say if we agree or disagree. <laughs> <laughs> or if the answer is, yeah. Cor- yeah. is that is correct. Yes. No, I'm. Uh, you're wrong. The, the answer is Billy Madison. Uh, no, my uh, what are, what are, what are my favorite? Uh, Not bad. My favorite comedies. Um, Jeez. I would While you're thinking about this, Billy Madison does have two of the funniest lines ever in it. Tell me. Um, it's got uh, <laughs> no, no, no. it's got Norm like McDonald. You ain't going to school. <laughs> it's, it's when Norm McDonald's laughing and he says, "This is the best day of my life." Uh, and yeah, when, uh, when maybe the funniest thing ever in said in a movie is when he says, "We are all now dumber." For just having heard that, it's so. Good. Billy no Madison points. is, and may God have mercy on your soul. That's what's yeah. his name who says that too. Yeah. By the way, the guy who writes all that shit. Call yeah, the shit right. poop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I would have to go with. Wow. Um, let's just put put me on the spot here. Well, this, is why you, this is why you don't do drugs. Well, it's like podcasts, no. You know what it is? It's like it's like. Oh, I, I mean, I don't think. Well, I mean, the server to come back. To I don't think the the Big Lebowski is a comedy per se, but it's one of the funniest films I've ever seen in my it, life. I would say that it's. A, it's I a, think it's a comedy. I'd put it. I, I would put the Big Lebowski in the comedy section sure. if I owned a blockbuster. Well, what about it? And then I would apply for a job at Netflix. For two fifty, you can own a blockbuster. I'm gonna, go <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and agree with DJ and say that it is a really funny. Film. Oh uh, yeah, agree. Yeah, might be Jeff Bridges' best performance. It, it might part. be, and he's one of my favorite actors, if not my I favorite. Think I, I would be shocked if if any one of us said this is one of our all time favorite comedies, and the other three didn't agree. Right, right. You never know. If I, if, if I told you that Freddie Got Fingered was one of my favorite comedies, Oy. yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Um, How um, high? Well, with Big Lebowski, <laughs> there's what. Thirty quotable lines from that movie, oh, and yeah. characters, speeches. Yeah. I mean, amazing ca- characters. Yeah, it's yeah, an yeah. absolutely great movie. Yeah. If you guys have not seen The Big Lebowski, um, get out from under a rock. Yeah, yeah. go see that movie. If rent it. If of course, you're still listening to this and you haven't seen The Big Lebowski, you are out of your element. <laughs> yeah, Coen Brothers. Right. Uh, Shut DJ the owns fuck everything. Up, Donnie. Yeah, DJ owns everything. Uh, right, so you can rent it for me. Exactly. Yeah, DJ gets everything early too. I remember I, I had to go to DJ's place to pick up a screening of uh, Black Swan. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I've never had to pry something from someone's hands harder than that. <laughs> DJ was, he had some candles lit. He was going to have a nice little bath and watch Black Swan. And <laughs> I came over and ruined it. Shards of broken mirror all over the place, <laughs> <laughs> rolling around in it. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess that's our big Lebowski conversation. <laughs> uh, let's move on to uh, let's move on to uh, our our beloved cheese. Cheese, um, cheese. Uh, let's uh, see what you, the the favorite movie of all time, as told by. Oh yeah, cheese. Well, okay, for me it's a toss up because if you don't say old school, we're all going to be really disappointed. <laughs> not not old school. Um, for me, I get a big kick out of Bottle Rocket. I, wow. Like I really, yeah. I mean, I laugh my ass off. It's a good film, you know, yeah. with like when the little scenes when Owen Wilson, you know, when I was a kid, I just wanted to make, you know, learn what make lightning, you know, and like <laughs> the running stop signs and like the subtle humor in that movie is outstanding. But being a, a product of the '80s, Spaceballs and Caddyshack are. are Two of my favorite. Yeah, Caddy, I should have said Caddyshack. Caddy yeah. yeah, Bottle Rocket and The Big Lebowski. Two What's his name in Bottle Rocket? Dignan? Is that his name? Yeah, Dignan, it's the yeah. best <laughs> name. Oh, uh, yeah, that movie I could watch. And and really for a comedy, if you can watch it ten times and then you know you find something new or two new things every time you watch it, just keeps giving and keeps giving. Bottle uh-huh. Rocket was like that for me. Yeah. Caddyshack is the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Caddyshack. It just, everybody is funnier than the last guy, and that scene when Dickenfield pulls off. Well, oh, yeah. I should also mention, I'm sorry, uh, I should also mention Vacation. Vacation is one great. of my uh, seminal but she, films. She's mentioned, mentioned something that I, I just love. I just love it. <laughs> 
can't find it. He really loved it that much. We ain't found shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is. Spaceballs is one of the best. That's ever. a scene in Spaceballs. And, and I, I'll tell you what, that, that scene is funnier. For for me, that scene is funny because it's Rick Moranis wearing the khaki, dark helmet outfit. <laughs> yeah, because he's outside. Yeah, that. The, but when you're a kid and you see the guy say, "We ain't found shit," it's one of the funniest things. That's one of the like you'll wake your parents up because you're all laughing so hard watching it. I'm actually the going khaki and, and, and and Christian, since this is the, the the kind of game we're playing now, I'm gonna go with. I think that Christian has to name a, a classic movie from the '80s or before. And then you have to do something from the 90s or to present because he had Big Lebowski okay. and Vacation. She's had Caddyshack, Spaceballs, Just and then he had uh, Bottle Rocket. So what are your two movies? More of a classic one and more of a modern one? I'll go modern first. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say um, The Royal Tannenbaums. Oh, All right. Uh, Royal Tannenbaums makes me laugh every time I watch it. I think Gene Hackman was robbed that he didn't get at least nominated for an Oscar. He's so he's, funny in that he's movie. really great. And when he... <laughs> you want to speak some drive? I'll speak some drive. <laughs> Would you say Coltrane? <laughs> I know you asshole. Yeah, and it's, it's. I mean, it's it's amazing. Um, and I think that he, I don't know, he just was able to do something with that character that was just unseen. You I mean, he had never seen Gene Hackman that way. You know, it's like he's like pulling one over on the whole family. Like, God, this is the most evil person in the world. Yeah, he was yeah. such, yeah. such yeah. a deadbeat. Wedge himself in through the family. Such but, a deadbeat. But you love him so much. You know, it's like he he's hysterical in it. I mean, every and then Danny <laughs> Danny Glover in it, and uh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> this is our adopted daughter, Houston, Margo. <laughs> I'm gonna now for '80s slash uh, older because just because I, yes, I love Caddyshack. It's probably one of my favorite my favorite comedy of all time. But it's just it's been mentioned. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go a little outside the box here, and I'm gonna go with Hot Shots. And thank you. The, the reason I'd go I'm, technically do, came out in '91. I'd go do. No, yeah. no, you know why? The first, know why? And I know and why. Yeah. I know what you're gonna say. This is the reason Ramada. I go. No, the reason I go <laughs> with Hot Shots Part One is because Lloyd Bridges is <laughs> crushes so that movie. Great. The funniest. That's Man corning where. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lloyd Bridges has so many great quotes in that movie. Lloyd Bridges in that movie, it's one of the best comic performances I've ever seen. And if that wasn't enough, at the end of Hot Shots, when Charlie Sheen drops a bomb on Saddam Hussein, <laughs> he just drops and he, his lap. Saddam Hussein is poolside sipping lemonade and he catches it, it's such a funny shot. And it was just, it, they pulled it off so well. Oh, God, it's such a... Topper, you're the best of what's left. <laughs> Like, like, Harlow's trying to find a Lloyd Bridges YouTube quote from Hot Shots right. on YouTube. All right, here we go. How are you, sir? Why? I want Hawaii. God damn it, Bill. I'm supposed to be in California. No, no, sir. This is California. Well, gotta run. Good luck. I'm for sir. <laughs> this is your command. Sleepy Weasel has been on the drawing board for 10 months. The president handpicked you. Yeah, damn right he did. No stopping us now, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if you, the home listener, could even hear that, but it, it, like, they'll find it. It was fine. worth it. It was worth I it. I mean, I don't know if you got it at all, but I mean, if you have not seen Hot Shots for Lloyd Bridges alone, watch that movie. He's yeah. so, I mean, just, oh, God, he's so funny in that movie. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I'd like also, to. Uh, Princess Bride was never mentioned. In no yeah. Law. This is a good one, too. We've done, Actually, the funny thing is that we've, we've done classic reviews on both. Um, Spaceballs and Princess Bride. Mm -hmm. We so, should do um, Hot Shots. We should definitely do Hot yeah. Shots. You know what was left out? Blazing Saddles. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you know what so else many. was left out was, uh, was that I didn't get to pick my movie. I saw Harloff going into wrap-up mode. I'm like, that bastard forgot it. <laughs> sorry, it's sorry. Like, he sends me a Nerf football every Christmas and thinks that makes up for it. <laughs> ah, it just true. doesn't. Uh, I'm gonna, my classic movie is going to be Monty Python and the Holy Grail, yeah, which one. I think is the funniest film ever made. Um, I, Animal House is up there. Uh, but yeah. uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail was still. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I thought he was going to shit on Monty Python, no. and um, <laughs> which we all love, right? Everybody agrees it's a. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah totally. And um, as for, well as animals. For the more modern movies, you guys have all gone with the more kind of subtle humor kind of route. So I'm going to go huge and gross out and go. There's something about Mary. Is, uh, um, it's classic. Uh, there's something about Mary. Brett Favre's acting is second to none. Brett Favre yeah. is great, and then Chris Elliott just knocks it out of the park. You can watch there's something about Mary, and it's just the the Fairly Brothers and <laughs> the Pete Powers. Really Tom Boganowski. It is really yeah. good, and the fact that You're I like it is saying something because uh, Ben Stiller is in it, and I don't like anything Ben Stiller. 
Yeah, Ben really like and, and Ben Stiller is great, and that's exactly what Ben Stiller was put on Earth to do. Yeah, yeah, uh, that in reality, but it's that's right. Well, uh, this is I mean, DJ, let's thank you. For thank you guys. By. It was fun to talk TV and stuff, and uh, we should definitely have you back in to talk some more. We should do like a full uh, podcast on just comedies and stuff too. What shows this this to, to help out DJ Goldberg? Uh, what what shows should everybody be watching for this fall? Uh, definitely tune back in for Chuck Nikita and Supernatural, okay. but um, uh, you know what, like uh. I, like we talked about before, I'd say check out Pan Am, and uh, and just watch Playboy because we're all interested in it, so we can all come back and talk. Right, about we'll see. What yeah, happens. totally. Just to just to chat about it, but um, we can all come back and wear smokers jackets when we do the Christmas <laughs> podcast. And we'll talk about right, Playboy. and we still have we'll have not seen another episode <laughs> of uh, Mad Men by then, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, I'd like to thank you, DJ. It was very nice of you to come in. Well, I'd like to thank you. I like to thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you. Uh, all right, guys. So again, I am Christian Harloff. I'm Mark Ellis. I am. You got the... No, I don't have the clip to... Jeez. Well done. <laughs> yeah, Pretty good impression. Uh, well, join us next week. We'll be back. And hopefully DJ will come back on again and join us as well. Most definitely. See you later. Peace. Peace. Oh.